everybody. This is Lou White again. I hope you can hear me. I wanted to read a couple of things out of the scriptures and show you the uh, preface to the NIV. Someone was interested in that lately. Anyway, I wanted to read Psalm 50, just two verses, verse 16 and 17. But to the wrong, or that's to the disobedient, Elohim said, What right have you to recite my laws? or to take my covenant in your mouth while you hated instruction and cast my words behind you. Uh, Who is it that we know that cast his words behind them? Well, the people that teach you not to obey. And I wanted to read this to you too. I want to read it out loud first and then I'll show you the text in the camera and you'll be amazed. Now this is straight out of an NIV New American Standard Version study and I uh, blotched out that word B-I-B-L-E that's a, that's a pagan deity's name and they don't know it but anyway NIV this is in the preface but let me read it to you this is pretty amazing now notice that they're admitting that they're taking, they've taken the name out of the text. And the reason that they give is for tradition. In regard to the divine name, they say is YHWH, commonly referred to as the Tetragrammaton. Now that means four letters. That's Greek. Tetra means four. The translators adopted the device used in most English versions of rendering the name as L-O-R-D in capital letters to to distinguish it from another word, Adonai, a word rendered L-O-R-D with just the capitalized L, and uh, for which small letters are used. And wherever the two names they're not names. I want Lord, L-O-R-D is not a name, and neither is Adonai. It's a title. Anyway, whenever they stand together in the Old Testament as a compound name of G-O-D, they are rendered sovereign L-O-R-D, in all caps. So uh, they admit taking it out. And uh, they go on to explain why they say L-O-R-D of hosts, which really means Yahuwah of armies. And I'm going to show you where that text is. And you can look at it and show it to people. Now, from this blue dot over, you can read the, uh, if I can get it in focus. In regard to the divine name, Y H. W H. There's no W. It's a W. It's that's a new letter. It's a you know just a, a corruption of. It's a it, w- it was invented by a typesetter. Anyway, this is the uh, kind of thing that we have to unravel as not serene. We have to find people who get it, <laughs> who want to obey, and that's uh, that's the the problem. Anyway, that was the NIV, and I have another, we've got an NASB. Now, the New American Standard follows the same information. It's written clearly the same way in the NASB. You see. And uh, these are things that I was studying back in the mid-80s, 84, 85, and I was circling things and studying and I noticed that the footnotes were arguing with the text. This is really an interesting thing too. There's a lot of mistakes, but one of the things that the Christian translators worked so hard to understand was what these festivals of Yahuwah were and are still, the the shadow of redemption. Uh, At uh, Matthew 26 verse 17, the NIV and the NASB and most other translations say on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread 
the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Now, what that opening statement is saying is on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, that's very clearly the 15th. That's not the 14th. So, Passover was on the 14th. He died between, you know, the between the evenings, sometime between uh, suns, between three in the afternoon and sunset. So, what are they talking about on the first day of unleavened bread? See, they've got a bad translation there. It's uh, and they try to backpedal it in the footnotes, and they try to spread it all out and say, "Well, don't worry about that. Um, that's just what they called it." You know, they wrote it down that way and. We just misunderstood the words or something. I don't know. But read it in your favorite translation and see what you can come up with there. But the 15th of the moon, the month, it's really the word month, is the first day of unleavened bread. So clearly they don't understand what that means. Anyway, we're not here to make people look silly. We're just trying to get the word cleared up. Now, the one I recommend is the BYNV, which is written by Nazarene. One of the most interesting things is this page right here that shows the actual uh, a picture of the uh, edict that was given to rebuild the temple. This is amazing. There's a lot of facts in here. And the prophets and their names are defined. And that's really fun to, to know about. Well, thanks for watching and watch for the fourth one. This is the third of the Nazarene search team. So keep watching for them. Bye.